Hello, um, welcome back to Windows 98 install on VirtualBox. Uh, this is a part two uh, and I'm going to see how many things um, I can run through in a reasonable amount of time. I think going to a 30-35 minute video is just too long so in this part two we're going to try and keep it down to about I don't know something like 15 or 20 minutes see how we get on see how many things we can cover in that time so the first thing that I want to cover um, is how to get rid of that annoying boot menu that we have every time we start up there's a pretty simple way of doing that um, if we double click on my computer go to the C drive uh, we want to go to view folder options uh, click on the view tab and then make sure show all files is uh, is ticked now I've already done this that's why it's ticked it's probably on one of those two options at the moment for you okay so click OK once you've done that uh, once you've done that you'll see a sort of grayed out version of msdos.sys here now if we go to the properties of that you'll see that it's a read only and a hidden file so we want to untick those for the moment and click OK and then we want to right click on it again and open it with notepad let's try that again oh here we go and just select notepad click ok and we just want to add something to this which would be a boot menu equals zero and that will stop that from coming up so you want to save that and close it. I want to go back into the properties of it and change it again to read only at hidden. Click OK. And now when we restart, the boot menu should be gone. If I got everything right. So the next thing we're going to do, well in a minute what we're going to do is install, automatically install hundreds of updates. Um, so the Windows 98 installation is going to restart over and over and over again. And if we have to sit here clicking cancel to the network logon box and uh, choose the startup option at the beginning, uh, it's going to take a lot longer than if we get rid of both of them. So what we're going to do, if we right click on Network Neighbourhood, this can be temporary or you can leave it like this permanently, uh, choose this option here and choose Windows Logon instead. It's going to ask us to restart. We'll click on Yes. Now this, this hangs here. So we're going, to, oh, we're going to force that to shut down and start again manually. Now this may ask us for a Windows Logon username and password. Choose option one, normal. Right. I've already tested this, which is why it hasn't asked for a Windows Logon. But if you do get a Windows Logon, uh, what you're going to need to do is right click on Network Neighbourhood. I've got to remember how to do this now. Um, sorry, go to, yeah, sorry, my apologies. Go to Settings, Control Panel, and double click on Passwords. And make sure in User Profiles you've got all users of this computer use the same preference, Preferences and Desktop Settings. And then go over to Change Passwords, click on this Change Windows Password, and leave everything blank. Click OK and close it and then it won't ask for that uh, Windows logon the next time you restart. Okay so the next step we're going I'm going to show you where you download the files and start this uh, massive automatic installation of uh, lots and lots of updates so I'll be back in just a second. Okay so the next step we're going to install something called auto patch for Windows 98 this is the 2007 version. Finding downloads, working download links of the actual files for this, which is 275 megabytes in size, is really, really difficult. So I'm not going to send you off to a link that may or may not work in the future. Uh, I'm actually going to upload the file somewhere myself and give you the link to that, a direct link to that. So um, on that basis, um, I've already prepared it as a ISO file. Uh, so we can just attach that down the bottom here as before choose disk disk image 
Um, we want auto 2007.iso. And here it is. So we just double click on this. And so it says this will install the June 2007 SP2 release. Um, so we can ignore everything else there for the minute. Just click Next. Uh, leave that as the default. Click Next. And that's fine. And Next. And off we go. OK, it says this has only copied the files necessary to update your computer to your hard disk. Nothing has been updated yet. You can start the program from the shortcut folder or uh, you there is also a desktop icon you can use. Please click finish to exit this installer. And here it is on the desktop. So we double click on there and off it goes. Now this is going to be restarting over and over and over again. So we've got to choose an option to start with. So A is immediately and fully auto patch this computer. That's the one we want. OK. So we type in A. Are you sure you wish to continue? Absolutely. So that's I. And then from memory, I did do a test run of this. Um, it's a pretty much automatic process from now until it finishes. So I am going to leave this recording and then fast forward it. Um, but you're going to get a lot of that restarting the computer. Obviously it didn't want us to restart the computer then. But off it goes. Now, you were, I'm just going to say one thing. This doesn't matter that this uh, opens up every time, uh, all that. But it says that, that you could push a key or wait 15 seconds. But because you've only got to wait 15 seconds, it does mean that you can do an unattended install of this whole thing. OK then, so it's finished. In hindsight, I think I should have uh, taken SciTech out the start menu and uh, turned the sound off. So let's just do the sound now. Go to Control Panel, Sounds. Start, start Windows, and we can just change that to None. Bit late now, but never mind. Stops it from happening every time we restart from now on. So, uh, press any key to exit the program. And in here, it has a list of everything that was installed, and it is really extensive. Um, it's installed Flash, it's installed Java, it's installed 7-zip, it's installed uh, Windows Explorer 6 point something or other. Um, it's in. I mean, it, the list is absolutely huge. DirectX 9, I think it's DirectX 9C actually. Yeah, 9.0C, which is the most up-to-date version of DirectX that can be installed on a Windows 98 system. Um, uh, huge numbers of them are critical updates. Um, and yeah, here we go. Power Menu, 7-zip, Flash, uh, Java. Lots of really, really good stuff. Now, there is a 2008 version um, with some more updates, but I cannot get it to work. What, it, what I can find to download does not work. So if anyone else can tell me where there's a working version of this to help me and everyone else out, that would be much, much appreciated. This is the best I could find, but it comes up with an er error message. So this is it, um, Auto 2008 update. 
uh, we'll create a desktop icon, yep. And launch it. Uh, but as you can see, um, it won't run. There's files missing. So yeah, if anyone else can uh, figure that one out, that would be much appreciated. But as things stand, it's quite extensive. We've got a lot of good stuff on here working. So the next thing on my list of things to do is to register our copy of Display Doctor. As you can see here, we've got 19 days remaining in the free trial, but we can easily solve that. I've provided a username and password in the description. Um, I've got them here. So I'm just going to copy and paste those That's not going to work. Forget that. I haven't set things up to copy and paste between the desktop and Windows 98, between the host computer and Windows 98. So, got to do it the old fashioned way by hand. And it says we can reboot now. and no more expiry date. So that's another job done. Right, for the next step, I'm going to use a program, Lemmings, to demonstrate the issue, the problem. So if we install that first of all, lemmings.iso, uh, go to my, let's close that. Uh, go to my computer, Lemmings. Oh, actually what we probably want to do, the easiest, Oh, do you know what? I've already done this. I do apologize. I've already tested this. So install, copy the entire contents of the Lemming CD to your desktop like this and run it from there. It's uh, easier because then we can have other CDs attached, etc. So if, oh, no, we don't want to do that one. We want to do this one. Double click on here. Uh, make sure that you've got, let's go to file and set options. Make sure that you've got all of these ticked and high resolution ticked. And then when we play a level, well, we heard one sound there, but most of the sounds are missing. The music and most of the sound effects are just not there. Okay. And the reason for that is because uh, most of the sounds for Lemmings are MIDI. Um, I can't really demonstrate it there, but they're MIDI sounds. And uh, the only sound card that's compatible with MIDI music and sound effects uh, is AC97. And at the moment, we have got, uh, let's just go to sound. We've got Sound Blaster 16 or all 32, all compatible sound. Okay. So to get that working, uh, what we need to do first of all is shut down. And go to settings and click on audio and we want to choose this one here, ICHAC97, and click OK. Now, when we restart, it's not going to have the drivers for it. And in fact, there aren't actually any Windows 98 ones available for it, but there are some Windows 95 ones available, and we can get that working. So let's just let this start up first. OK. So here's a link, I'll put that in the description. And you want to download this one here. Okay, and that will download a .exe file. Um, that should have started downloading, but we can click on that direct link there. So that, that will do, do a direct download of a .exe file, which isn't any good for us as it stands. What we need to do is extract it. Uh, let's go to the downloads. So I can delete that one because I'd already downloaded it. So this one here, what we want to do is right click. Now you should have 7-zip installed already. Click on open archive and then we can see everything that's in that exe file and we need all of that. Okay. So if we create a folder in here and we'll call that AC97 sound driver 
anything you like really and open 7-zip up again Control a to select everything and just drag it into the folder we've just created so we can close that now and have a look in there we can see it's all there okay and then we get image burn open click on create image file from files and folders Control a to select everything drag that in there like that uh, click here and we want to just put this onto the desktop and AC sound driver dot ISO and save it click yes to that and OK then we can close everything we can close that and now on our desktop well we don't need that but we want this one here AC 97 sound driver.iso and if we attach that um, so we want to attach the one the ISO file we just created then click next here and we want to um, do we want to display a list I think yeah display a list and sound and video game controllers and then we want to click on have disk browse select the D drive click on this Win95 folder and it's already selected the INF file which is our driver click OK click OK uh, these seem to be identical so I don't think it matters which you select click OK click next and click finish I hope that wasn't too quick I hope you're able to follow along but once again as I said at the beginning of the video I want to try and keep this video to a reasonable length okay so we can close that so if we right click on my computer now go to properties go to device manager and we can see now that our sound uh, well actually we want to delete this click remove and then yep we've got the Realtek AC97 driver so we can close that now if we open up lemmings all of the sound is now working so that's great news so some games will work better if you've got Sound Blaster um, drivers and some will work better if you've got AC97 drivers. It might be worth having more than one installation um, and you can name them. One of them, um, uh, sound, you know, SB, Windows 98 SB and Windows 97 AC97, something like that. So when you experiment with different games and you get different results, you can just boot into different operating systems with different drivers that do the do the job for the particular game or program uh, that you've installed. So that is one more job ticked off. Uh, next, we are going to install Windows 98 Plus. Okay, so the, the next thing on the list is installing Windows 98 Plus. Uh, this was a request uh, by a subscriber, and I said I would do it. It does seem pretty straightforward but it was a little bit of a struggle finding the files for it so once again what I'm going to do is upload these somewhere and give you a link to download the file the file name will be plus98.iso so uh, find the link in the description you can download that file uh, and we want to choose the disk image once again plus98.iso we'll find that attached to the D drive and we can install Okay, so let's just minimize that. So we need a CD key. Once again, I'm going to put that in the description. Um, I've just got that down here in my notes. So it's 040, 1234567 and that will install. Uh, I'm not going to choose scan for viruses now. And we want to do complete. That's fine. We've got plenty of space. Um, yeah, we may as well configure the desktop theme. 
And do we want to run the maintenance wizard? I'm not entirely sure what that is, to be honest. Um, so this is where we can choose the theme. I'll show you where you can find it in a second. Or at least I think I will. So I remember one that was some kind of horror theme or something, which I used to think was awesome. But does it still exist? It's not that one. Not that one. Oh, here we go. Horror Channel. That's got to be it. So click OK. We could have just applied that. Uh, the maintenance wizard. Yeah, we don't want to run that actually. I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to select no to that. OK. That's some strange sounds going on there. So how do we change the theme? Right click on the desktop, click on properties. And where is it? I think we just go into programs. Yeah, and then go to desktop themes. And that opens up that window. I mean, you can select by going through the normal properties, you can select each of the things such as you know the desktop background and the screensaver etc but this does the whole thing in one go but you'll also notice what it installed that's that's getting quite annoying that noise i must admit so i'll probably get rid of that in a second but microsoft plus 98 also installed some other things let's try a game I remember this, so I think I'm going to stick with skill level 1. Sounds like that's more than enough for me, more than a match for my skill level. Uh, and you have to get three in a row. Simple as that, or four in a row, or five in a row. Uh, so, or here, look, I can get five in a row here. Uh, I forget how to do this anyway so that's the game so the next thing on the list because I'm doing this with the arrow keys but there's one more thing we can do so I'm going to exit that game and the next thing on the list is uh, getting a joystick to work but what I'm going to do first of all is disable this because it's really irritating. Okay, we'll try something else. Right, so uh, yeah, the last thing on the list then is simply uh, getting a joystick to work. So uh, give me a second, I'll get prepared, and I will be back. So getting a joystick to work or a gamepad to work within Windows 98 is another item that's been requested by a subscriber. Uh, more than happy to do it. This is a pretty simple thing. You might find that uh, because we're running with USB 1.1 in Windows 98, um, there may be some devices that are going to be incompatible with that, but most joysticks and gamepads will definitely be compatible with USB 1.1. So simply all you do, if we if we go down here, you'll see this little uh, symbol of a USB connector. If we right click on there, you'll see what's connected uh, via USB. And we got, uh, yeah, I've got a, a little tablet thing, my microphone and a gaming mouse. That's it. So what we have to do, first of all, is plug in a, uh, a little gamepad. So I just had to climb under the desk to plug that in, which is why I paused the video. But now I've plugged it into my host PC. If we right click, uh, right -click here, we'll see that we've got a, uh, an eight button gamepad connected. So if I left click on there... 
Windows 98 recognizes that something's been plugged in. Now this is a, a very basic USB human interface devi uh, device. If we click next, display a list of, uh, of drivers, and there it is. It'll automatically install that. Do we want to keep the file? Yeah, we've got a newer file installed, so uh, do we want to keep the file? Yes, we do. And then click finish. Uh, so now, if we go to settings, control panel, is it gaming options? Yeah. Okay, click on properties, and there we go. I can, that's all working. So that will now work within games. So really that brings us to the end of this video. I think that's been a pretty good start of a part two. Uh, part three is possible, but let's see what the feedback's like. See if there is anything that can be added uh, that's going to be of use to people. Um, I don't want to just keep making videos for the sake of making videos. It would be good to move on to something new. Uh, but if there are some things that I know how to do, that I can do, and you want me to do it, uh, that, uh, uh, and there's enough uh, f positive feedback from people, then by all means I'll move on to a part three. Uh, but in the meantime, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.